live in a world full of stress, anxiety, tension. Does this, this reflect in our dreams? Are we aware of what our dreams are saying to us? Ancient civilizations thought that through their dreams, they could solve their problems. They could travel to different worlds. Today, I invite you to envision this other realm. Please, everybody, close your eyes. You are in ancient Mexico. <laughs> Please open your eyes. You're in Great Tenochtitlan, the capital of the Aztecs. You are an Aztec. Everything is determined by the gods. They rule your life. You see the incense burning on top of the pyramid. From the corner of your eye, you can see the skulls from the last sacrifice. They are hungry for human hearts. You fear them. At night, when you go to your humble hut, you have a simple fire to cook, an altar where you have your idols and you pray to them every night, and a mat to sleep on. But you fear, you fear the mysteries of the night. You think that through the night, demons can come. They can snatch your baby. They can eat you alive. You don't know if the sun will come out the next morning. You ask yourself, Will there be a next morning? Well, for the Aztecs, a dream was an outer body experience. They thought that an alter ego called a Nawal would come. He would transform your soul into an animal counterpart. He could be a sorcerer, a trickster, an enchanter. And he could take your soul during the night he could slurp children, even. That was the bad Nawal. But there was also the good Nawal. The good Nawal was your guardian. He would protect you. So he would transform your soul into an animal. And with that energy, you could be a jaguar, an eagle. You could fly. You could hunt. So imagine you would wake up in the morning. You would go to your daily rituals. You would take your broom, you start sweeping the floor of your house. You go out to the entrance of the, the house, you're still sweeping the floor, and then you realize there are some footprints of an animal. So then you know for sure this Nawal came during the night, he took your soul, and you were transformed into an animal. And maybe you were flying or you were running. Because of the footprints, probably was a coyote or a jaguar. So for the Aztecs, every day was linked to another god. And each one of those gods had an animal counterpart, a Nawal. So imagine I was a mother at that time, and I had a son. I would take the, my son to the priest, and I would ask him to see is in his divinatory calendar of the date of birth of my son and with which god was he linked to. So if my son was born in the day of the rabbit, he would be associated with the pulque gods, this alcoholic beverage made out of a maguey. So for sure, the future of my son would be to be a drunkard. <laughs> so imagine my son was born on the day of Tezcatlipoca, this handsome young god, the god of night, the god of war. So my son probably would be a warrior. He would get to wear the skin of a jaguar because the Nawal of Tezcatlipoca would be the Jawar. So we, he would have some great advantages as a warrior. He could have night vision. Imagine that. He could have the velocity of the feline, but he would go to war. The cry of war, the groan of an animal, a Jawar in this case, it would help him go and find captives to bring back to the pyramid to be sacrificed. So if my son would be born on the day of Quetzalcoatl, the god of riding of civilization, the god of wind, then he would have another Nawal. The twin would be a dog. 
this dog-like god, Xolotl, was in charge of going to the underworld. If you were buried as an Aztec, you would be accompanied by a dog. You would be wrapped in a bundle in a fetal position, and this dog would help you to go to the nine levels of the underworld to get to your final destination, the Mictlan. The God will help you because there were nine stages, nine challenges that you have to go through in order to have your final destination. For example, there was a huge river that you had to cross, and the dog would help you. But for the Aztecs, they thought that Xolotl, this dog-like god, was very important because he had the task to go to the underworld and find the bones of ancient civilizations. The Aztec didn't know, but around them, they saw huge bones. And today, we know those are prehistoric animals. For the Aztecs, they were giants that they were destroyed because they were defective. So Xolotl, as a dog, the same as any dog, would dig dirt, find bones, and then, with those bones, magically, he could bring and he could create human beings. For the Aztecs, a dream had also a special power, to communicate with the gods. There's a legend. The Aztecs were in their original place of Aztlan, this small island, and their patron god, Huitzilopochtli, the hummingbird from the south, came to them in a dream. And he told them, you have to go out of Aztlan. This is a very small, poor place. You have to search for a new land. Go out there and look for it. So the Aztecs listened through their dreams. And they saw Huitzilopochtli talking to them. So they went and they walked for years. After years of peregrination, they came to a land where they settled. And they had this huge city after a while. Tenochtitlan. And this Tenochtitlan thrived. Today is Mexico City. So I was born in Mexico City. You can tell by the accent, right? So um, I was surrounded by the pyramids, the ruins, all these engraved stones. They spoke to me. And I was really curious to know about this ancient civilization, to learn about Moctezuma, the fifth lord of the Aztecs, this great, famous Moctezuma. And Moctezuma was eager to know if this place, Aztlan, this legendary place where the Aztecs came from, if it really existed. He wanted to know if Cuatlicue, the mother of his patron god, really existed, and she, if she was living in Aztlan still. So she ga he gathers 60 men, 60 priests, 60 wise men. And he wants to know if Aslan exists. So imagine you're one of those messengers, and Moctezuma is going to give you wonderful gifts for Quatliqui. He gives you beautiful feathers of exotic birds, textiles, and precious stones. You have a very, very difficult task. Imagine that you have to find this place, but this is a mythological place. How are you going to be able to do that? You need special powers to have this magical journey, right? And with the help of psychotropic substances, like peyote, ololiuki, woodworm, also bloodletting and fasting, you invoke the gods. And then you are transformed into your own Nawal. You become a jaguar, you become an eagle, you fly, you run, and then you get to this very mysterious place, and you encounter this old man. The old man tells you that Quatlique still lives in the mountain, and he invites you to meet her. So you try to go up, but it's very sandy, it's very hard for you to go up, but this old man comes up and down very easily, because this is a magical place. It is the place of abundance, of eternity. When you meet Quatlique, Mother Earth, that she has this beautiful serpent skirt. And you give her the gifts that Moctezuma gave you for her, but she doesn't want them. These are very luxurious items. She doesn't need them. Instead, she gives you some loincloths made of anakin, a very rough fabric. And then you go back to Moctezuma, 
and you have to tell your story. For us, probably it was a dream, but for him and for all the Aztecs, Aztlan really existed. This was a real place. So Moctezuma feels really empowered. He really feels very, very happy because he knows that his lineage comes right from those people who came out of Aztlan. And Cuatlicue, the goddess, is also there. But this happiness doesn't last very long because he, has, he hears some rumors. There are some beings coming to the coast of Mexico, but he doesn't know exactly what they are. Are they superhumans? Are they gods? So again, he asks his priests. And he tells them, do you know anything about it? Have you dreamt anything? Do you know any prophecies of these beings coming to the coast of Mexico? And one of the priests tells him, I had a dream about a fierce river coming through the streets of our city, destroying everything in its path. It destroyed the palaces, the houses. But today we know those was a, that was a premonition that the Spaniards were coming and the invasion of the Spaniards in Mexico City. So for the Aztecs, dreams had different meanings. They could communicate with gods. They also helped them, empowered them, and they could have their Nawal in order to solve their problems. So maybe in 2016, we can find our own Nawal to try to solve our own problems. Thank you very much.